hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got an animated children's toy. Well, a little while ago, I had a regular viewer of the show send me a link to this book. And that would be Animated Animal Toys in Wood by David Wakefield. Guys, the reason that they sent me this link is because they thought, you know, I might enjoy making some of these and that my granddaughter might enjoy having them. And once I saw the book, I knew that they were 100% right. Now, I don't have distribution rights to give out patterns from this book, but what we're going to do today is we're going to take one of the toys from that book and we're going to make it here on the show. So let's get started with showing you what toy I chose. So I've gone through the entire book and I have to say there are 20 projects in this book and I honestly can't see a single one that my granddaughter would not love to play with. But the one that I've chosen to make for starters for her will be this one right here. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce it, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to call it the Dramatic Dinosaur, way over here on page 168 in this book. So the book has complete instructions as, as to how to make it, as well as pictures on the process and the different parts as you go along. Now, they also have in this book the patterns for this entire project. Uh, on a one-to-one -one scale, you just need to photocopy these patterns in order to make them with your wood. You've seen me do it here a thousand times, and that is what I've done. So the first thing we're going to start with is the body sides. Now I need two of these at three eighths of an inch thick. So I have cut some three eighths thick cherry because that's what I'm going to make this dinosaur from. I have cut it big enough, the two blanks, so that my pattern will fit on there quite nicely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for starters, I'm going to coat this entire piece of cherry with painter's tape, making sure that I tape them securely together. Uh, I'm going to adhere our pattern with spray adhesive onto our cherry blank. And the first thing that we're going to do, according to the instructions, is drill all of our holes with the exception of our front axle and our eye hole. And by following along on the pattern, which is very clearly labeled, you can get your holes drilled. I have added one extra hole here. It's because when I stack cut, I like to do uh, an interior cut. So I drill a blade entry hole. So at this point, we're going to cut all the way around the perimeter here. However, we are not going to cut the teeth. We're going to come down outside of that area and um, don't cut them for now. I don't think we need a video of me scrolling this out, so I'm going to get this cut and then I'll come back and see you. And before too long, you end up with your two body pieces. So we're going to put these aside now um, and we need to cut some spacers. Now, guys, if you don't have a scroll saw, I just want to point this out. This pattern is perfectly suited to bandsaw work. So if you have a bandsaw, you can still do these projects. Heck, you could probably even do this with a jigsaw. So we're going to, as I said, work on the spacers. And I have some cherry milled out. This is 7 eighths of an inch thick. And we need to cut our tail spacer and our head spacer. So same process, we're going to use the spray adhesive and the masking tape, but just remember, don't cut your teeth. We're going to get into that afterwards. So cut out these two spacers and then we can move on from there. Well, I tried to cut the head spacer as close to the lines as I could just to help me with alignment, but on the tail, I cut it just 
proud of the lines because at this point now we need to glue this together and I think what I would rather do is have it slightly proud and then I can sand it and make it all even. I think it'll give a better looking product at the end. So what we need to do now is remove the patterns from our spacer pieces only. Leave this pattern on the side. We are going to glue these pieces together. What I would suggest to do is to glue one half on first. So glue these pieces here on and let them set up. Once they get set up, then use some dowels. Place them in these holes so that we can perfectly align this top piece and clamp and glue it together and let it completely cure. And while we're waiting for that body to dry up, I have taken the leg sections and cut them out. And using spray adhesive, I'm just going to attach them down here. This is the body section that we um, cut our body out of. And just so that we don't waste stock, I'm able to fit the leg pieces in the little off-cut sections here in the waste areas. So very little stock wasted here with this project as far as this goes. And we can cut all of these pieces over at the scroll saw or band saw, however, um, whatever method you see fit to cut these, get them cut and the holes drilled. You need two pieces of each one. And before too long, you'll have all eight sections of the legs cut. Um, I stack cut these to get them all the same. You just want to remember, if you're going to stack cut, it's a great way to get identical pieces. However, it will also duplicate your mistakes. So cut carefully. We're now going to turn our attention back to our body, which is now dried up. And what we want to do is we're going to drill this front axle hole. We're going to drill the eye hole and as well, over at the scroll saw or the band saw, if that's what you're using, uh, we're going to cut out all of these teeth. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now in the patterns, there are some top view um, sections, and that is for the head and the tail top view. It's kind of carved on two planes. Now in the pattern, however, we have them both listed as the top view of the tail. That's just a mistake in the pattern. This is quite obviously the head. So what we're going to do is I've attached the pattern to some 1 8 inch hardboard. I'm just going to lay it on top of my tail here. We're going to trace this out and then I'm going to use my power carver to carve the side profile and give this some shape. And now that I've got the shape the way that I want it, I'm going to take this over to the belt sander and I'm going to even up any areas that are a little off kilter and as well give this thing a good sanding all over. Guys, if you don't have a power sander, don't worry about it. You can very easily shape this with rasps, files. Uh, you can even take it over to the bandsaw, stand it up on it's back like this and cut this profile and then hand sander file from there. There are many different ways that you can achieve the shape. So I'm going to get this all sanded up to the way I want it and shaped and contoured and then I'll come back and see you at that point. And when you're done, you end up with something that looks like this. Isn't that adorable? Now, I have added an extra little kind of groove here to kind of give them those bulging eyes. If you're going to add that kind of detail, that's just fine. But you want to keep in mind that you have a quarter inch diameter through hole right through here. So don't go too deep because you'll end up with a huge hole and a gap here. So now that we have this, we're going to turn our attention to the sail. Um, and for that, you're going to need some quarter inch thick material and, well, you know what, let me show you what I've got. Well, for the sale, I'm going to do it a little bit differently than what the book states to do it. And the first thing I've got here is a piece of cherry, quarter inch thick, and I've cut it to be five by seven. I have cut two pieces like this, and as well, the book calls for quarter inch thick 
uh, contrasting wood. Well, I don't have any, but I do have one eighth thick. So that's just fine. And that's what I'm going to use. And I've cut this to a size of five by seven as well. On one piece of the cherry, I've covered it in masking tape. And all I'm going to do is using spray adhesive, I am going to apply the pattern for the fin or for the sail rather onto the masking tape on this five by seven inch piece of cherry. And at this point now, I'm going to stack these two pieces together and tape around the edges with masking tape so that we can stack cut these fins. But I'm not going to cut them out the way the book says. I've drilled blade entry holes here at each one of these divots. Instead of the 3 16 diameter hole down at the base, I'd rather cut this manually with the scroll saw. So I'm going to cut each one of the interior cuts of these fins as an interior cut. And then when I get that done, I'll show you what I plan on doing next. Well, I've got all of the center parts cut out of these sails, like what I said I was going to. And I realized uh, much too late, as is always the case, that in my own stubbornness to do it my own way, I kind of messed myself up. And the way that I did that is that by cutting these out like this, I eliminated my pattern cuts for in between the fins because they're on my cutouts. Oh well, live and learn, right? It's no big deal. We're gonna fix that up and everything's gonna be just cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave our pattern attached to our sails, but we're going to separate our pieces of stock. And now what I'm going to do is on the inside surface of each of these pieces, I'm going to give this a sanding just to take away any um, burrs that might be there. And once we get that done, I am going to glue this together with our walnut pieces sandwiched in between so that we end up with everything lined up and glued together just like this. Well, while we're waiting for that cherry walnut sandwich to dry up, um, we're gonna cut out the lower jaw. And it's just as simple as attaching it to a piece of three quarter inch thick cherry in this case. And we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw and cut it out. Now on this piece, there are two small alignment marks right here on the front. I have transferred those to the top of our jaw piece and I'm gonna remove our pattern. And now I want to shape it. I don't wanna leave this so square. So in the same method that I shaped the body, I'm going to round off this jaw a little bit, sand it up, take a little bit of the edge off these teeth and put a little bit of a chamfer on them. And then that piece there after a good sanding will be done. So with that lower jaw shaped the way that I want it, we're gonna put that aside and we'll turn our attention back to our sail. Now, as I said before, I kind of messed myself up by doing it the way I did, but I think that I can uh, make it still work. The pattern kind of weaves in between here, in and out, and that's all I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill these 3 8 diameter holes in the sail, and then I'm gonna take this over to the scroll saw, and I'm gonna cut out the sail, uh, doing my best to replicate the parts of the pattern that some fool went and cut away. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Well, I think I did a half decent job of faking it, um, it's not perfect to the pattern, but you get the gist. Now there is two more alignment marks right here. Those two alignment marks are gonna show you where to glue the jaw on to this section. So first, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna peel off the pattern. I have transferred those alignment marks to the bottom of our board here, and I'm going to sand this all over, making sure to take off any sharp edges. You gotta remember young ones are gonna be playing with this, so sharp edges are definitely not uh, something that you want. So give this a good sanding, and then at that point, it's time to glue our jaw onto our sail assembly. And those alignment marks are just going to line up there, and that will get glued onto the bottom just like that. So 
glue this together, sand it up, set it aside, and let it dry. Now while we're waiting for the jaw to dry up on the sail, the last pieces to make here will be the wheels. And all I've done is use the dimensions in the plans. And for me, I've turned mine on the lathe. I mean, if you don't have a lathe, don't worry about it. You can cut these on the scroll saw. I've shown you guys before on the show how you can mount these in your cordless drill and spin them to sand them so that they're perfectly round. Follow the dimensions and the plans and you'll be just fine. Um, for this as well, the wheels are one and three quarter in diameter. This is a very common size for store-bought wheels. Um, they are available commercially to purchase. And if you don't have any means to make your own, you can just buy the ones that are commercially available at one and three quarters in diameter. So at this point in time now, I think it's time for assembly. Well, for the assembly, all I've done is I've cut the dowels to the lengths that it calls for in the book. And we're going to first glue on our front wheels. Um, now with these wheels, when you glue them on, you want to have the dowels flush here in the front. The wheels will be loose fitting and spinning. And what I would suggest just to make it a little more fun is to offset these 732nd diameter holes here so that his legs are going opposite in the front end. Now I have also placed in mine, I have cut some washers from some clear plastic lids and I will put those in between the wooden parts just to keep the wood from rubbing with friction on them. Just like that. And then you can clean up your squeeze out and that is basically the front wheels installed. Um, our back wheels are a little different in that we have that one inch cam that we made that will go in between the body, um, the body sides. So for that, I already have one of our wheels glued up. I have the washer in place. We're going to slide this in place here. We will slide our cam right like this. Then we will place our wheel there and we will glue our second wheel in place. However, we won't glue in our cam just yet. Um, we will do that once we get this glued up. We can just slide this off to the side, apply a little bit of glue and then get it centered there on our axle. There we go, just like that. Now that is the back wheel glued together with the exception of gluing that cam in and I'll do that right now. I'm actually gonna try to apply glue from both sides. Oops, got a little bit of squeeze out there where I don't want it, but that's okay. We can clean that up in just a second. There we go. So now we can clean up the squeeze out in there and let that set up. Now a couple of things that I have done that they do not tell you to do in the instructions is for starters, I have drilled a 1 8 diameter pin right through that cam and into the axle just to give it some extra strength as well. I didn't really like this just flat butt joint here on the jaw piece to the sail. I know what my granddaughter is like, and this dinosaur is going to be eating everything in its path. Uh, that's just the way she likes to play. So I wanted this lower jaw to have some extra strength. So I pin that with some quarter inch diameter dowels. So now it's time to put this piece in and it just slides in here like this and through our um, 5 16 diameter holes here, we will just put it through the 3 8 diameter holes. It sits in there very loosely, just like this. And once we get it in place, we can glue these pins and that will be the fin and the jaw done. 
and we can just test it to make sure it works. Oh, it looks like we've got a little bit of a binding issue there and that's okay. That just means that what we're going to do is I'm going to have to elongate that hole that's in the back here at the back of our sail. But that's okay, that's why we do dry fits. So I'm gonna fix that up, we'll glue this in place, and then all that's left to do is mount the legs. And for that, we have some 732nd diameter dowels that I've glued some caps on the end. I'm gonna sand them up and make them look a little prettier than this. But essentially, you follow the plans in order to install uh, your legs the way that they're supposed to go. So this will go something like this. It's, they're very loose fitting. You'll have to trim them up um, to make sure that they all fit correctly. You know what? I've put this one up backwards already. See? It goes in through the larger hole and then the pins fit firmly in the smaller hole and then this will fit into this hole. I know it doesn't sound like I'm explaining much. And then this one will go here and this way. Once it's all said and done and you get your pins trimmed, his little legs will go around like that as, as he's played with. So follow the instructions. Uh, it's a very simple laid out explode it diagram and glue in all of your leg pieces as well. And when it's all said and done, you end up with something that looks like this. This thing is just adorable. The way that the arms go around, his sail goes up and down and his mouth opens and closes as he wheels across the floor. It's just a brilliant little design and just an adorable toy. Guys, you gotta give this a try. And there you have it. An animated wood toy. Guys, I have to tell you that this project not only was a ton of fun, but it really took me a lot longer than what I initially thought it was going to. At first I saw the book and I leafed through it. I knew it was right up my alley having a young granddaughter and I just kind of figured, you know what, I'll go to the shop in an afternoon and bang one of these off and no big deal. That is not the case. This was a time-consuming project. Because you're dealing with the young ones, you need to make sure that all those edges are really well sanded, or as they say in the book, you break all the corners. I'd never heard that terminology before, but I love it. You break all those corners. That way it's not cutting into the young one's fingers. Um, so there is a lot of sanding in this, and hence that's why I use cherry, because it's a softer wood. Plus it's pretty. I like the look of cherry, especially with that walnut center sail. Now, speaking of that sail, um, this video goes to show that just because you don't have some of the materials that they call for in a project, that doesn't mean that you can't do that project. And in this case, I didn't have any quarter inch thick walnut or contrasting stock so I used two thicknesses of 1 8 which was what I had and in that case it worked just fine so where there's a will there's a way so don't be discouraged just because you don't have the exact thing that they call for now in this book they do use store-bought wheels and store-bought pegs and as I've stated you don't have to do that. You can make your own. And in my case, I turn them on the lathe. So again, if you don't have the stuff or access to the stuff that they use in this book, there's no reason you can't do the project. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is that I had said um, that I was going to pin that cam uh, because they didn't mention that in the book and then I actually read a little further in the instructions and sure enough the author does say to pin that cam. He says to use a 1 16th inch drill bit and use a toothpick. I used 1 8th and a dowel. It's the same thing. Six of one, half dozen of the other. The point is that the cam is pinned and he had the idea first, I guess, and I had it second, and well, you know what, great minds think alike. 
Now, guys, this is not a tutorial as to how to build this wonderful toy. This is more of a bringing this book to your attention, just as it was brought to my attention, and showing you the uh, processes involved to make one of the toys and featuring that toy so that it will help you to decide whether or not you would like to purchase this book, just like I did. So I will post a link to the book down below and you know you can use the information I've given you here to decide if you want to make one of these for yourself or if this book is even for you but I've got to tell you there's a ton of projects in this book and they all look great I had a hard time deciding which one to make for today's show guys I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week it has been a lot of fun um, my granddaughter is going to love this toy. I just know it. And I hope that you're going to take the initiative to make some of these for the young people in your life. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss the notification of future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed the content that I've brought you today, guys. I hope you're going to give this a try yourself. Maybe check out that book. Check your local library. They may have it. Try the, pro or the, the toys yourself. And more importantly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.